How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and here's a lighting breakdown from interviews I shot earlier this year for Food & Wine showcasing this year's best new chefs. We were able to shoot in one of the suites at the Venetian which helped me plan out my lighting setup in pre-production. I found a schematic of the room layout and designed my camera and lighting placement around that. I knew that the room had a massive window so I definitely wanted to use that as motivation for my key light. For the shoot we used three FS7 so that they would be able to match perfectly. In terms of settings we shot 4K24, S-Log3 and rated the cameras at their native ISO of 2000. For lenses I rented out the Sigma Cine zooms and they were pretty awesome to work with. I'm a big fan of the Sigma art lenses and the Cine versions use the exact same glass. It's just rehoused in a professional body. A lot of people complained about that fact but it's actually not a bad thing. They're so incredibly sharp and have a great modern look. I think these lenses are great for narrative or interview work, but the focal length barrel has such a humongous throw that it's hard to justify using for run and gun dock situations. However, that long throw and the detailed lens markings make it really nice when you have to be really accurate and precise with your measurements. I wanted these lenses specifically because I wasn't quite sure of what focal lengths I wanted to shoot at since we weren't able to really pre-light or scout the location beforehand. On the day, we ended up going with 25mm on A cam and 58mm on B cam. Now I want to walk you through my exposure rationale, and it gets a bit technical so bear with me. One of my biggest pet peeves I see a lot in interviews are windows that are completely blown out. So my main goal was to capture these interviews while retaining as much information as possible in the window highlights. Since I shot in S-Log3, I was able to maximize the dynamic range within the frame and make a very calculated exposure decision. When shooting with S-Log3, you retain six stops of highlight detail and eight stops of shadow detail. This basically means that whatever f-stop I shoot at, I'll be able to capture anything six stops brighter than that and eight stops darker than that. So I wanted to shoot the interviews at an f2, which meant I had to expose the sky at f11, which is five stops above f2. I could have technically exposed to an f16, but that would have caused me to start losing highlight information, which is what I didn't want in the first place. To expose the window at f11, I needed three stops of ND and had to meter my key with three stops of compensation. My fill was metered at a 1.4 so that the interviews wouldn't be too moody and fit the overall tone of the piece. We also moved a few of the practicals around to help motivate the source and they actually varied in brightness levels so I threw them both on dimmers and spot metered them at f8 so they would match intensity. Speaking of lights, the only light we used was an airy sky panel and it was great. For diffusion, I used my DIY 5x5 frame that I made from PVC and a bedsheet. Really simple and also really cheap. Using the two in tandem gave for a great soft light source and I was really happy with the result. I placed the light on the opposite side of camera so that it's motivated by the window in the background. One of the photographers actually saw some of these dailies and asked if I'd used a window light which is music to my ears as a cinematographer because though we used a bunch of tools to light the scene, the photographer viewed it as natural light, which means that I've done my job that young phantom DP there. To monitor, we use the trusty old 1703 from Small HD with two separate Teradex for wireless video. It was super important for the client to see both feeds simultaneously, so the 1703 was a perfect fit. I was really happy with how these interviews turned out, and it was all thanks to my trusty light meter. If you don't have one, I strongly suggest you pick one up ASAP. Making calculated exposure decisions is a key part of honing your craft as a cinematographer. Yes, we do have different exposure tools like false color and the waveform, but nothing beats being able to precisely quantify a specific area of light. I hope this video was helpful in some way, and if you thought anything was confusing, feel free to leave me a question in the comments below. I know all the tech specs get a little bit dicey at times. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.